Hey everyone, this is Andrew for Nerdy Collectibles giving you a figure review. Today I have the Toys R Us Network Spotlight exclusive Finn Baylor. You can't find this on their website just yet, but these are starting to show up at the stores themselves. So if you haven't been to Toys R Us, go ahead and try to look for it. Uh, here's a picture of the front. Here's a picture of the side. It's got Finn Baylor with the uh, blue and his dreads there. And then another picture of him on the other side. And let's take a look at the back. This Finn Baylor is uh, inspired by the old Texas mythological story. Uh, for you, guys, for anybody who doesn't know, it's the chain. It's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, you see the chainsaw there. You see the uh, the uh, duster on him. So that isn't too bad. Go ahead and freeze this video if you like to read uh, the back. But uh, if not, then let's continue. Man, this is one figure I like to keep in the box. Uh, I'm not an MLC collector myself, but keeping something like this in a box is pretty cool. He has a little bit of a dynamic pose inside there, which makes it look pretty awesome on a shelf. This is a little trick that I picked up, uh, taking an X-Acto knife and just cutting the tape and just getting inside there and just kind of just gently nudging the cardboard out. So you can see with his dynamic pose there, he's got the chainsaw there in one hand, he's got his other hand out, and then you see his leg down there. Uh, it's posed in a way that it, if you leave it in the box for too long, probably it'd stay warped. My figure, it was warped, so just to let you know. We also have these little annoying tassels at the end, these plastic bands, and we also have plastic bands holding the chainsaw to the hand, so... Just be ready with some sort of scissors or knives or whatever you use to cut things open with. I can't say how much I love this figure already. Like I said, inside the box it's really cool. Uh, for an MLC collector, it's pretty awesome, but out of the box it's even more cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the chainsaw. It's, it's uh, red and black. It's not. It's detailed. It's not. Uh, no paint layering, no shading, or anything like that. But you do have some details on one side, and you can see where you, you're supposed to pull the chain or uh, pull the rope on there. You can see on the other side. You can see the engine. You can see motor parts and whatnot. It's got its handle. It's got the blade. With it doesn't have any chainsaws on it per se. It's just a, it's a long, dull, blade-looking thing. Next, let's take a look at, at his uh, hat, or his head garment. This one is decorated with a little bit of red. Just one streak of red, and all the other streaks are blue. Let's, if we compare it against the Elite 41 or Elite 46 Baylors, it's the exact same thing, exact same mold. The only thing that's different is uh, the blue in it, which uh, it replaces most of the red that was painted in there. So it's nothing uh, too fancy or extravagant. It was just real something real easy to do for Mattel. Let's go ahead and take a look at the jacket. I'm actually pretty impressed with the jacket. They put a little bit of detailing, like stitching details all over this jacket. The buttons are painted differently. The one thing I will say about it is that it's not made of the new rubber material that makes that's like really flexible. It's actually made, I think, of the same quality that we used to get. So it's pretty stiff. Uh, they do cut a slit down the middle there, but it's still it was pretty hard for me to get it off of them. So let's go ahead and take a look at the figure, and I just want to say that this is probably my favorite Finn Balor, Finn Balor figure. Uh, if you take a look at the face there, the eyes are painted really well. Uh, I think he ha he's sporting a, a, like a little bit of a, a smirking look there with his mouth, which is a little bit, I think, is different than the other two. I think it's like one of the regular basics heads and then um, repainted to uh, be put part of this elite figure here. You see the um, open mouth with all the teeth there that you're accustomed to seeing. You see a bunch of blue paint. One thing I'll say is I like the way that they painted the head there. You can see where the color changes from the paint to the hair. And then you can see where it fades a little, which is really nice. You don't really see that in a Mattel figure in the WWE line.
going down his arms, you'll see the black, the red, and the blue, which is painted really nicely. And off to the tights, you see the same combination there, which is also painted real nicely. One thing I will say is that I believe that the uh, torso is a new torso, not so much a new mold, just a new one that they're using for Finn Balor. I do like it. It looks a lot better than the older ones. The older ones, I think they were going off like the Miz's body or Daniel Bryan's body. Which, if you've seen Baylor wrestle, you know that he's much more muscular than those guys. See the paint. Paint looks pretty good on the other arm. No complaints here. We'll go down to uh, his tights and we'll see that. The decals, the paint work, everything. It looks really nice. Uh, I know Mattel gets a lot of a lot of lip service from Mattel collectors or from wrestling collectors about the paint applications. And so far, I don't see too many flaws. Uh, I like that they painted the knees all the way up to the kneecap. But also that... Yeah, let's see that boot's all right. Oh, there we go. See that boot? You got the QC issues right there, which is kind of a bummer. But at the same time, uh, as a display collector, you, you late longer and longer you go, having a collection, uh, small mishaps or I wouldn't say okay per se, but you know something that doesn't bother me as much anymore. He's got two peg holes at the feet, so you can peg him into a display stand. All right, so let's go ahead and check out Finn Baylor against his other elites. You got the elite 41 to the left and elite 46 to the right. Uh, it's really hard for me to say which one I like most. Of course, the, the very first is pretty awesome, but so was uh, was it the Beast from the East or something like that, the Japan one. And then you got the one in the middle, which is a uh, Dallas Takeover. And each one of them are really good, uh, but I just gotta say this new one with the accessories and everything, and the, just a little bit of blue, it's pretty awesome. I do like the Elite 46, I just wish they didn't paint the torso, it was an unpainted torso. Check him out against his NXT brother in, we got the Sami Zayn from Elite 41, or 40, I can't remember. We got some Moa Joe from Elite 43, and Kevin Owens from Elite 47. And that is it. That is my review. I did not do an articulation review today because uh, we already know what the early articulation is like. But this is a very fun, fun figure to have. And if you haven't picked it up already, I suggest you do. These network exclusives, some of them are kind of hit and miss. You either get them or you don't get them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're in the store one minute and the next minute they become incredibly hard to find. So that is it for my review. If you're a Fowler fan, go ahead and hit that like button and leave me a message in the comments. Tell me why you like this figure. And if you like this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification. That bell notification will tell you whenever I upload another figure review. This is Andrew for Nerdy Collectibles and thank you for stopping by.